Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. And by Change Now, a limitless crypto exchange. Cake Wallet, Sweetwater Digital, and Change Now are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Sergey Chernik, aka Sec1, a Monero developer that has made very important contributions to Monero's mining network. The two discuss Sergey's most recent breakthrough contribution, the development of P2 Pool. Monero's first decentralized mining pool that lets miners team up to mine together without taking any fees and without yielding a centralized pool operator their vote in the network, thus allowing for pools that can grow large without fear of a 51% attack on the network. The two also discuss how Sergey came about finding and working for Monero, Random X, and what areas in Monero need more improvement. Please consider donating to Sergey for his development work. His address is posted in the show notes. Please also consider donating to Doug's CCS proposal, so Doug can transition to working full-time on helping Monero grow. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Sergey, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Is it? <laughs> it's Sergey. Sergey, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I should know that. I, uh, <laughs> I have Eastern, yeah, Eastern European, uh, 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 some Eastern uh, European roots and uh, associations. Uh, Sergey, yeah. so where are you where are you calling in from? If you don't if you don't mind telling us, so you don't have to. Uh, I'm from Russia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Cool, man. And uh, I, I was asking you off air. I, I guess we, we never met before, right? We never we never met at a Monero event or anything like. No, that. I've never been to Monero events. Like I don't go out to public. Okay, so so this is exciting. This is exciting for me. <laughs> I imagine it's exciting for for you and the community. Uh, you know, we certainly yeah. seen your name around quite a bit. Um. As a, as a developer, mainly working on things related to to mining, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Ever since I joined uh, Monero Development, so I worked on mining related uh, problems, starting starting with Kryptonite uh, modifications back in 2018, and all the way to Random X and then XMRIC and now peer to peer pool. Yeah, that's why I brought you on today. I, I saw that that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, very exciting that that you did that. Yeah, I've been working on it for actually for months. So uh, I didn't want to tease uh, the community because I wasn't sure it, it was possible to do it all. So uh, at first I wanted to make sure that it works. Then I announced it. Very cool, man. That's yeah. uh, very Russian of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome. I'm just excited that you're on. Uh, you know, it's, it's always exciting to talk to uh, a new, well, you're not a new person in Monero, but a, a new yeah. face to put, a, to put a face to somebody who uh, the Monero community should know about. Obviously, a lot of people like to stay anonymous. So very cool that, that, you're, that you're coming out and you're coming out yeah. on the show over here. Um, so how did you get, before we get into the, you know, P2 pool, um, can we talk a little bit about your background, like how you got into Monero and, you know? Oh, yeah, that's, if you that's an interesting story. So I've been uh, not very interested in crypto 
like four years. I heard of it like in 2011 about Bitcoin. I thought it was interesting at the time, but I wasn't really pulled into it. But uh, fast forward to early 2017, like in January. So I was running my um, uh, distributed computation project, uh, Boeing, if you know, if you heard of it. So it, it's like distributed computing and some uh, altcoin team contacted me. They wanted to use my project for their altcoin or whatever. I don't remember the details. So I need, they needed to set up something on my side. So I did it. And yeah, that's how that was the first thing. Next. What, what was the project that you're working on? I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't... It, was, uh, it, was, it wasn't related to crypto. It was like distributed computation project. And yeah, they contacted me. I set up what they asked for. And uh, yeah, that's when I started uh, digging into crypto more. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think it was April 2017, I bought a new computer, all new in China. It was uh, right when AMD Ryzen released, I think. Yeah. So I started looking into what I could do with crypto with it. So what I could mine. I quickly found that Bitcoin was not an option. <laughs> Uh, so I uh, googled like what you can mine with CPU, and that's how I found Monero. So it, uh, I actually got into Monero for mining at first. Then I uh, learned more about it, and yeah, it appealed to me. It's like uh, very solid crypto from my point of view. So I stayed. Yeah, that's how I got into Monero. <laughs> what? Why were you most interested in, in the mining aspects from the get go? Is it just because you just wanted to get your hands on some crypto? You wanted to? Yeah, no, I didn't want. I was just uh, distributed applications and computing always like fascinated me. So mining was resonating with what I was interested in. So it was like a hobby for me at the time. Very cool, man. Very cool. So uh, I guess uh, we could continue to talk about Monero generally before we get into the P2P pool. Or P2 pool. Um, what would you say? Because I, I was thinking of this as, as I was uh, kind of doing a little research about you. What would you say are some of uh, Monero's or what you potentially see as things that can be improved in Monero with regards to its decentralization? And, and you know, obviously you developed P2 pool, which I think is kind of a big breakthrough in, in furthering the decentralized nature of Monero in terms of uh, how it's mined uh, with regards to pools. But are there other things that kind of cross your mind or that you think about uh, as that, that are areas that possibly need improvement or things that you think that you yourself may want to work on? Well, um, yeah, as I wrote on Reddit in my post, uh, the exchanges are a central centralization point in Monero, but I have high hopes for atomic swaps that they will take off hopefully next year. So it will be less of a problem. And mining was centralized, well, it still is centralized in a few major pools. So that's a big problem from my point of view. Because you literally have like four or five people who control or well, like, uh, what control uh, uh, seventy percent of Monero hash rate, <laughs> so they run these pools. Uh, I'm not saying that they are bad; they are all nice people. I talk to them on RSC, but they can be, um, yeah, pressured to uh, use this hash rate in a bad way, so to say. Yeah, and theoretically, yeah, it can, it's possible. Yeah, so, so, so let's get into that. Let's get into the meat of it. Yeah. So that, that was the problem you were essentially trying to solve with that, right? Is, yeah. uh, make it make it a more uh, distrib dis distributed, so so people can yeah. mine in a pool um, and benefit from the fact that when you mine in a pool, you get consistent rewards as opposed to solo mining where you have to wait to to potentially if ever actually land a block, right? Uh, so you get that benefit, yeah. but without the the negative consequences of of centralizing uh, all the mining hash power to whoever controls the pool. Is that is that essentially what the problem was that you're trying to 
set out to solve? Yeah, the, the original idea of mining or proof of work was that everyone runs their own node and everyone mines on their own node, but it quickly became a lottery, like you say, because it's too hard. It's only 720 blocks every day that, that are mined and you have like 57,000 miners on the network now. So uh, average miner has very little change to find a block. So that's a problem with all solar mining and pools solve it, but at the cost of centralization. And yeah, I was thinking about peer-to-peer -peer pool for a while, but I wasn't sure it was possible to do. I, I know it was done for Bitcoin uh, in the early years, but it didn't take off there because of ASICs in my opinion. Is it, so it was done on Bitcoin at one point, and then it just never took it off. It was it was done like where or like a few years after Bitcoin was released. So it, it probably I don't know exact date, but it was released shortly after the other pools for Bitcoin were created. But it was ne it was never a big part of uh, Bitcoin hash rate. And why is it that you thought you think it never uh, I think it's because uh, big ASIC farms they don't really need peer to peer pool, they just either mine solo or mine on uh, one of few big pools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. So in Monero, it, it appears to be taking off already, right? To a degree, yeah. We have uh, let me check, we have like 25 active miners right now and 36 mega hashes. So it's more than 1% of net hash rate right now. Yeah. That's amazing. And, uh, even taking into account that people still have to compile Monero, compile peer to peer pool from source, set up everything themselves. So it's not even in, uh, it's not even released yet. So it's a, actually in beta testing phase still. And it's already at at a one percent. You said it's a bit more than one percent. Yes. Oh wow. Okay, that's yeah. exciting. Um, so, what do you think? How 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 much do you think this is going to grow? What, what's their well, I don't I don't know. I think when uh, we release the binaries or official binaries, more people will join. I think it can grow up to one two hundred mega hashes. Of like five ten percent of one error hash rate, but I don't want to grow it uh, more because it will be hard for small miners to uh, find uh, pool shares if it grows too much. But uh, yeah, we can, uh, it's possible to spawn more than one peer to peer pool. Mm -hmm. So right now we just run one. Uh, well, let's call it share chain. It's a blockchain that it runs on, but it's possible to spawn more than one. Uh, and the second one, for example, can be for smaller miners and have smaller hash rate, overall hash rate. But you wouldn't want any one version of this uh, to grow too large, is what you're saying, because it would start to. Well, it's uh, not a problem if it grows too large because every miner runs their own nodes and uh, they can't control other miners' hash rate. So it's not a problem if it even grows more than 50% because no one controls it. Right, but for the purposes of... of for the pur If it grows too much, yeah, small miners, they will be uh, having a lottery again, but not at uh, this scale, a smaller scale, but it will still be a lottery. Mm. So, so, then, so then I guess, like you're saying, so then probably the most likely scenario is there'll be a multiple versions of this competing P2 pools. Yeah, um, there will be probably multiple P2 pools when the binaries are available and some guides are written to how to do it. It's not actually hard to do. Now, so was it, was it kind of uh, unique in, in what you needed to do here versus what was done in Bitcoin when they did it in Bitcoin? Or, or was it essentially... Well, I, I checked the Bitcoin's implementation uh, first. It was made in Python, so uh, I'm not very familiar with Python. And I took a quick look at their code. I uh, realized I couldn't just use it, so I had to write everything from scratch. 
Yeah, and there are a lot of differences between Bitcoin API and Monero API, Monero Node API. So it had to be done from scratch. Mm -hmm. But the overall uh, architecture, or not architecture, but the overall concept is the same the, in, in terms of what the concepts that are used behind it to make it work? Yes, so overall concept is the same. So mm -hmm. miners mine on peer to peer pool blockchain which has lower difficulties, so they find more blocks, uh, many more blocks than when they do solo mining. So currently, peer-to-peer uh, -peer difficulty is like, yeah, 1,000 times less than Monero difficulty, so they find they have 1,000 more chances in the lottery, so let's say. So explain that to me a little bit more. So they're, they're mining uh, essentially a separate Blockchain? Yes, it's a That's it's a, it's built on a blockchain, and they mine on a separate blockchain. But when they find a block on this blockchain, it's also checked against Monero network, and it's compatible with Monero network, so it can be submitted to Monero node when it has enough uh, proof of work. So mm -hmm. that's how it works. Very cool. So it's just like uh, it's also called merge mining. If, merge. if I'm right, yeah. Okay, very cool. And there's there's no fees, right? Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, Bitcoin P two pool it has fees, uh, but I decided not to include fees because um, I don't think it's uh, morally correct. Uh, it's against the point of peer to peer pool that everyone mines for themselves. I'm actually not running any servers to support it except my own node that runs peer to peer pool. So I'm not sure what to collect fee for. Awesome, man. Yeah. You're, you're, you're such a true uh, Monero guy. You're, you seem uh, yeah. very well aligned with the uh, idea. I still, I still have my donation address there, but yeah, yeah that's about it. Yeah, we we'll put that in the show notes for you. Um, yeah, anybody that's, that's listening, watching this, uh, send this guy a donation. Uh, well, well deserved. Uh, very cool that you you know you set out. You did this on your own, uh, without funding, right? You just you just took it upon yourself. Yeah, I didn't like, was want to ask for funding because, like I said, I wasn't sure it was possible to do. Right. Yeah. You just you just showed up. So I, I, I didn't want to give promises and tease people, and then didn't, and then I wouldn't deliver. It would be bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but so uh, I appreciate you for that and. Now it's the community's turn to you know throw, throw you throw you some tips for for your work. <laughs> yeah, would it make would it ever make sense? And obviously, I'm I'm sure there's there's probably re, you know potentially reasons why I would it uh, to do something like a fee, but maybe have that fee go to uh, a donation, um, a general donation address for Monero development. So essentially. Uh, collecting donations for further Monero development and I don't know you know well, I'm, I'm not sure it's it makes sense because I haven't heard uh, that some today um, not uh, crowdfunding requests were not filled I think uh, everything it, it's not a problem with Monero right now all crowdfunding requests they are quickly filled as far as right. I know. Okay. Uh, but I guess part from that, you know, because we're always talking about new ways of funding. Obviously, other coins have more centralized approaches. Just wondering if it would ever, if you think in your mind, if it would ever make sense to have something like what you created, but where you're, there is a fee and perhaps that fee goes towards funding further development for Monero. It just creates a pool of money that, I don't know, the, that maybe the miners collectively decide what to do with it in terms of. I get. I, I could see. Uh, I could see. Mm, uh, thinking now. No, uh, yeah, I'm thinking now. <laughs> I we'll, think uh, we'll current see. systems with the donations works reasonably well. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Why? Why is that? I'm just just so for those listening, so to hear kind of the logic and. Yeah, and uh, also, uh, if may, maybe people don't know, but in Monero node, you can start mining to donation others. I think uh, there is such an option. Mm -hmm. So. People can donate by mining, but uh, yes, it's actually uh, it's also it's also possible to with peer to peer pool. You can just send a donation address and mine to it if you want. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So that that's already being done effectively in some some way. Yeah. In terms of uh, comparing, you know, the current methods, so you can you can solo mine, you can use a traditional pool, and now you can use the P two pool. Um, so obviously, it, it doesn't seem it seems like a no brainer as to why you would use. There's really no reason to mine any other way. Uh, well, uh, there are some downsides. Yeah, what would you say the drawbacks are? Is it just ease, ease of use, or are there other uh, drawbacks is that you have to run Monero nodes, which comes with this uh, with requirements like lots of disk space and uh, internet bandwidth. So it's not an option for everyone. So the easiest way to mine, obviously, is just a pool, right? And you join a traditional pool. Uh, this requires a, a few more steps, and yeah, you have to set up Monero node and it's a pool node, and yeah, those two nodes, and then you can just start mining. Do you anticipate those things getting easier, more user friendly, perhaps as well? Yeah. It will be much easier after release, so people will just have binaries they can download and some command line examples or guides how to set up. So it won't be much harder than just uh, mining with Xabrick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool, man. And so do you, are you thinking of uh, additional ideas beyond this, or what else are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about... Uh, making an interface for pools to mine to p2 pool so, so currently uh, regular pools they mine to monero nodes essentially they solo mine but with the combined hash rate of their miners and i'm um, thinking about uh, making an interface for pools to mine to peer to pool node instead of monero node if you understand what i mean yeah, if you say it again, it's just, it's just, uh, it <laughs> so it's, it's actually, it's more for smaller pools, uh, because they don't get blocks so often. And they could mine to P2 pool instead and pay their miners. Yeah. So, so a smaller pool would just join the PT, P2 pool. Uh, to get more uh, regular payouts and pay their miners more regularly. And you would create a kind of a more user. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, just thinking about it, it's not compatible with Monero node APIs right now. So it will be a lot of work, I think. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you think you're going to try to work on? Uh, eventually, yeah. I don't have much time right now because okay. I worked on Pitapool on my vacation, actually. <laughs> Spent four weeks coding because I couldn't. Uh, go anywhere because of you know what's yes. uh, yeah current situation in the world so i just didn't want to sit at home and don't do anything and by the time my vacation started i had everything in my mind how it would work so i just had to sit and start coding yeah so that's what i did so do you ha you have like a, a non-crypto day job is that is that uh Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any thoughts in getting more involved in crypto and in Monero in particular? Kind of oh, I can't think of how I can get more involved if, if I'm already like uh, all the free time <laughs> spent on Monero. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you Would you ever do uh, proposals to the community to try to, to try to gain? Funding beforehand before you you do um, no I never never did uh, funding proposals before no, not, pl not not planning to do them because okay. I also do coding work for XMRIC so I get payments from XMRIC too so I don't think it's it's um, no, it doesn't make sense to also ask for Monero funding because I, I don't really need it okay. Yeah. For what were you saying for XM Rig? You do work. Yes, uh, yes, I'm also one of two XM Rig programmers. And so, were you one? You were one of the original creators of that as well. No, I joined XM Rig like in 2018. Okay. Okay. Um, what what type of work is involved there with XM Rig? Uh, from my side, it's mostly 
implementing new algorithms, optimizing everything, making it run faster. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where do you see that going? What's kind of the future of XM XM Rig? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's it's just uh, currently it's uh, it's uh, in the state that it just works. Okay. So uh, uh, we support uh, a smooth operation for miners. It's much more like a supporting uh, right now than just implementing new stuff. Yeah, but sometimes we have to implement new stuff. Like uh, last time in June when uh, Volnera forked uh, to the new mining modes when they have to sign uh, block templates, they got rid of pool mining actually. So they solved pool mining problem the other way around. They just disabled it and it involved a lot of things to, to an XM rig too. And that's how I got into internals of how Monero code works when mining on Monero nodes. And that's when actually I found out how to do peer to peer pool. So uh, there were a few missing parts that I didn't know how they work, and then I knew. And yeah, that's when I started working on peer to peer pool. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Monero compared to other cryptos in terms of how it's mined? Uh, you know, random X, this idea of yeah, um, you know, it's it's one of the easiest coin to mine for like regular people who don't have big GPU farms or ASIC farms. They just need their uh, computer or even laptop, download software, start mining. It's the easiest coin to mine, in my opinion. Do you think it's going to maintain that status? Yeah, it should maintain that uh, because uh, I literally got into Monero because of mining, because of how easy it was. And we get constant trickle of people joining Monero uh, from mining. And once in a while, we'll get people like me joining. So it will benefit Monero. I often I've asked this question before. I guess it's probably a silly question, but it uh, it, it gets some some people thinking, or hopefully gets you thinking a little bit. Um, you know, what, what do you see as the future of what devices will see mining Monero? So we you know we have RandomX. We seem to be uh, continually trending towards being one CPU, one vote on the on the network in terms of mining. Do you think we get to the point where you know? Uh, phones are, are actively. I know. I know. Technically, you already can, but where it's you know happening in a very real way, where um, phones are mining Monero, or your refrigerator is mining <laughs> Monero. Um, what? Where do you see this going, or is it just going to kind of maintain its? Um, uh, I don't think phones will be used uh, in the foreseeable future for mining mm -hmm. because they are just not designed to do it. People try, uh, people burn their phones because they overheat. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's not a, it's a good way to destroy your phone. Yeah, but technically, yeah, they can buy Monero, most modern phones. Mm -hmm. So it will just be continue, people just continue to mine on their kind of traditional CPUs. Is that? Yes, uh, just traditional computers and laptops for, for the next few years. but. Uh, what happens after that? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I want to know. That's what I'm trying to find. <laughs> Come on, you're you're the genius in the in the room. Yeah, but yeah, RandomX <laughs> is a solid algorithm which will stay for a while. Right. Maybe it will be tweaked in a few years uh, to better match uh, CPUs that will be released uh, at that time. You're saying some tweaking, potential tweaking the random X to make uh, it well, a few few years uh, down the road, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because CPUs also evolve, and uh, it was a perfect match for CPUs that were in, released in 2019, like uh, Ryzen CPUs. But they also they get more cache, more cores. So I think random X will need some tweaking in a few years. Do you see that as a potential centralization issue? I mean, that's you know what people would say that uh, 
would argue against. Yeah, it's more a centralization of development, mm -hmm. uh, but the actual mining is not centralized except for pools. Yeah. Item. Other, otherwise, it's decentralized. So everyone around the world can mine Monero without much issues. Right. Do you see that as a real issue, the centralization of development? Do you think that's a, a real problem or is that something that's... Well, I don't see how it can be done decentralized. Uh, we already have a lot of contributors from around the world who can submit pull requests to Monero repository. So uh, anyone can take part in it. We just have a few developers that are most active and people call it centralized, but it's just how things work. One or two people always are more active. And do you think eventually Monero gets to the point where it's, you know, proof of proof of work uh, never changes? Well, eventually when it grows, uh, yeah, it will be very hard to do such changes because of the size of ecosystem. It was easy to do in 2019 when we forked to RandomX because it wasn't that big, but uh, with time it will be hard to do. Yeah. And then ultimately, do you see some some form of ASIC taking over uh, whatever whatever that may look like but eventually I, there being I don't think so I see in time uh, newer CPUs will be faster than older as usual uh, they will the uh, was designed to make ASIC uh, be similar to CPU so they won't have much advantage advantage and it will always be possible to mine the CPUs especially uh, considering how Intel and AMD, they are releasing uh, new or faster CPUs like every year. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, they took a good pace, not like the last decade when was, Intel was releasing the same CPU over and over again. So I don't think uh, ASICs will be an issue in the next few years at least. Mm -hmm. And yeah, RandomX has been running for almost a year now. It was released in uh, November 2019. So yeah, almost a year now. Yeah, what's what's your opinion of it in terms of its success? I mean, for, from my vantage point, it looks like it's been quite successful, but I, I don't understand the, the technicals too well. well what's, what's your take there? Well, in terms I of was... What it was intending to do and whether or not it's, you know, working as intended and... Well, it is working as intended uh, because we don't see, don't know about any ASICs and I monitor uh, the network from time to time, uh, do some analysis and I don't see any signs of ASICs. And there's this very healthy growth rate in, in the hashing power, correct? Uh, yeah, it grows steadily without any a huge spice, like, like we saw with Kryptonite when A6 uh, appeared. We have a huge, like, doubling of hash rate in a short time span. I don't see anything like this with RandomX. And it's more stable than uh, other coins. For example, when China planned mining for 10th time last year, no, this year, it was this year, mm -hmm. and the miners started moving Bitcoin hash rate uh, dropped like 30%, and Monero hash rate stayed the same. <laughs> that says a lot about uh, distribution of miners. They are more dis decentralized than in Bitcoin. Yeah, so, uh, so overall, I mean, do you think Monero's mining network is or has the potential to become more robust than Bitcoin's? Obviously, Bitcoin has a much larger. It's uh, it's more it's more robust because there are no huge mining farms in Monero, mm -hmm. uh, which operate only on profits. Uh, so they don't shut down when some government of the country they operate in says to shut down. Uh, it's mostly small scale miners who do this not exactly for profit but for other reasons for example they they can get uh, 
KYC free Monero by mining. It's a real option. Mm -hmm. And do you think Monero is kind of already at that point then where it's perhaps uh, more unstoppable in terms of its mining than something like Bitcoin? I mean, because that, that's obviously, you know, the big question, right? You know. Uh, yeah, it, it certainly is more unstoppable because, yeah, uh, and we have to talk about this uh, uh, mining botnets. Uh, there are a considerable part of Monero network, like 10, 20 percent at least. And they are constantly uh, fighting with antivirus companies and uh, software manufacturers to stay alive, so to say. So they're already under attack constantly. and they keep mining as far as i can tell so it's very hard to stop monero network because of that at least and also because of all other small miners who just either don't care about price or don't pay for electricity they, they'll just keep mining yeah do you do you see that as a negative at all the, the botnets and the mining malware? Uh, yeah, it's a negative for people who get infected <laughs> Obviously, but for Monero network, it's uh, I think it's more from my point of view, it's more neut neutral for Monero network. Yeah, it's it's a hash power which just mines and it doesn't try to at attack. And you said that's about twenty percent of the network. You think? Yeah, by my estimations, mm. 10, 10, 20 percent because we just don't know who is mining. We can tell because there are no huge mining farms in Monero. Right. And I mean, these are, this is all, I guess, uh, assumptions, but do you think that 20% is mostly controlled by, you know, one large entity that. Uh, no, I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen huge, but nice, uh, this, this 20% are more like th thousands of small, uh, but and mm -hmm. a few larger ones. You think that's going to continue to grow? The the percentage? Uh, no, I think they're already capped at, ma at maximum capacity because it's been two years since RandomX released, mm -hmm. and all systems they could have infected they already did, so they're already mining at capacity. I think. Oh really? Okay, that's interesting. So when when Monero network grows, it will be growing not because of botnets, uh, but because of more people started mining. And you're saying that's because the botnets have already infected anyone that they already could in terms yes, of... Yes, it's a uh, it's constant battle between the antiviruses and botnets. And it's uh, like an equilibrium between who finds uh, unprotected system first and starts mining on it because all unprotected systems on the internet, they're already infected and probably mining Monero <laughs> right now. Yeah, so I don't think uh, botnet hash rate will grow at all. Okay, from, from from where it is now. Very interesting. Yep, botnets, ransomware, the dark markets. I mean, Monero's got a lot of uh, you know controversial uh, aspects to it. All of which you know I think are indicative of of the fact that it works as intended. I mean, it's unfortunate that they come with negative consequences. What's, what's your take on that? Do you have thoughts on that? Uh, yes. Uh, I think it's uh, not for Monero to solve this problem. It's more for law enforcement and antivirus companies to, and for end users to secure their systems to update regularly use antiviruses to be better protected. Uh, because if, it, if there was no Monero, they, their systems would still be hacked and used for other uh malicious things like ransomware or ddos attacks uh anything else mm -hmm. it's just monero is the easiest option to start to exploit the hacked systems right if anything it's accelerating uh the, the yeah, it's like a, an incentive for hackers to hack more systems and for everyone else to protect them better right right interesting yeah, but in, uh, at the end of the day, it's up to end users to and law enforcement to actually fight uh, hackers. Are you concerned at all about you know the state entities coming after Monero, clamping down on Monero? You mentioned you're in Russia. I don't know. I don't know what 
you know, the, the talk is like there on, on the streets in terms of... Well, I'm actually, I'm not in Russia, I'm in Sweden. Oh, you're yeah. in Sweden. Okay, you're from yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, just in general, are, are any concerns of how, how states may, may react, start reacting to Monero? Uh, well, ho honestly, I don't think Monero is uh, big enough for states to be really concerned. They, they do have some bounties, like uh, IRS bounty, but uh, the size of those bounties just says how much they care. It's more like uh, Monero needs to grow 10, 10 times bigger bef before they start even uh, speaking about it seriously. And I don't think it will be bound. Uh, it's, it was, it's in the same state as Bitcoin was like seven years ago mm -hmm. when everyone uh, said it was, it's for criminals, the criminals use it, it will be bound and so on. Yeah, it's just a uh, common saying about crypto uh, from people who are not into crypto. Right, right, right. I guess a little dif different than the the Bitcoin scenario, though, because I mean, uh, it's a little, a little more unstoppable, right? So I mean, uh, yeah, it came it came later, so it's uh, better designed from the start, right? To be more resilient to all sorts of attacks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just designed to work, and uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, because like with you know the ransomware, obviously that's that's becoming a, a, a big issue because we're seeing uh, it being used in in very effect, unfortunately effective ways. Um, yeah, I th structure. I, th I, think, I think criminals just use it because it's, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's basically it's just a tool. Monero is not bad by itself, it's just a tool that's used and yeah, criminals must be in jail, but uh, I don't think it justifies yeah. banning Monero just for this reason. Okay, yeah, no, I don't, it certainly does it, but uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is perhaps states may start taking a look at it before Monero even gets much larger just because it seems to already be in the spotlight, you know, for yeah yeah uh, those uh abil those use cases but uh, even if some state tries to ban monero just other states will not do it because they are not all on the same page uh, there are different governments around the world some don't care some uh, don't think uh, even don't know about monero it, it will always be like half of the countries will not ban it the other half if they try it won't work to just uh, push it underground but it will still be used so you're from right uh, Go ahead. yes uh, yeah what i wanted to say is the same as it was with BitTorrent, with uh, file sharing protocol yeah uh, it was in late 90s when file sharing websites pop up pop up uh, they were eventually bound uh, but then as a response BitTorrent was created and it was peer-to-peer -peer network it still is mm -hmm. and it still goes strong despite many governments trying to ban it yeah so it's not it's not easy to stop a decentralized network because uh, there's no single door you can knock on and say stop it right yeah yeah, I mean, the, the way it was effectively stopped is uh, companies just had to make, uh, be more user-friendly than, than these yeah. networks that offered it for free. So it's like, I might as well, I'd rather pay yeah. some money. BitTorrent Bit Network wasn't stopped. It's a good, nice tool to use even right now to distribute, for example, Linux, uh, right. Linux distributions. They can be downloaded by torrents. Right. And uh, the way it was uh, not start, but uh, coexists with current uh, film industry is just they give much much better options to just pay and one click pay and watch whatever you want. Right. It's like I might as well just watch that. They, ju they just made it easier to uh, uh, 
to do it legally than just downloading from sketchy websites. Exactly. Exactly. And so, I think uh, I think uh, this is also the reason uh, Mandera will not be banned mm -hmm. because it's just a tool that works, and uh, there must be other workarounds to for uh, yeah to criminal activities. Mm -hmm. Are there other cryptos that you're interested in? Um, not really. All right, good. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I read news. I uh, to keep an eye on other cryptos, but uh, no, not really interested. Mm -hmm. Because most of uh, newer cryptos are DeFi, decentralized finance, and yeah, so it's mostly for making money and number go up. I don't see a huge idea behind them. So not so appealing to me. Why, why do you think we're, you know, I ask this question all the time. Uh, why do you think there's this disconnect between what Monero actually offers and the utility provides versus what it's currently being valued at by the market? Uh, because the market is not interested. Market is interested in making money uh, from numbers go up, narrative. So they find some new shiny projects. Uh, they feed on them, and they, they uh, two weeks later they forget about them. And Monero is yeah, like I said, it has utility. It's used, uh, and it can be used at any price. It just it works no matter what price it is. So there are not many speculators in Monero. And that's why price is not so exciting to watch. <laughs> yeah. But l long run, do you, do you kind of see the cream rising to the top as... Uh, yes, uh, eventually. Uh, in the long run, uh, the use of Monero will grow. And the more people need it, the more will be the demand. And it should naturally just grow in price uh, so when more people start using it. You ever think we see a country adopted as legal tender, like we saw with uh, El Salvador and Bitcoin? I know they're already talking about um, adopting other or cryptos in general as as legal tender. There's been been talk of that in El Salvador, but do you ever see uh, yeah Monero uh, being adopted somewhere as legal tender? Mm, don't think so. Maybe in the five years, an optimistic scenario when people re realize that Bitcoin can be can't be used uh, safely by people when they expose all the finances to everyone. Uh, but I think El Salvador they did uh, custodial wallet, mm -hmm. so. People can see each other finances, but government can see everything and can block everything, which is frightening for me. But yeah, yeah. when people st start using their own wallets and start realizing that everyone can see their bank account, so to say, it, they will start looking for something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Any opinions on Lightning Network? Um. Yeah, it's uh, uh, technic from technical point of view, it's a very nice solution, but it also has some limits for capacity. Because if you try to onboard one million people, you need two million transactions on Bitcoin chain. So it will still be slow to, and it will still end up like an uh, El Salvador when, the, when they have one or two lightning nodes that use custodial wallets for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, it just can't work the other way with so many people. Right, so not, not scalable in terms of onboarding. Yes. Long run, do you, do you see Monero having something like a lightning network built on top of it or some other sector? Uh, not sure, long run. It should be possible, but right now I think it's not possible because Monero lacks some time lock hash transactions. I don't remember exact details how it's called. But yeah, it's sure it's possible on Monero too. Maybe uh, it will require a hard fork to support. Yeah, but it's possible to do. 
So I kind of asked you at the, on the outset, but I'm going to ask you again, if you don't mind. So like uh, in general, when you, when you look at Monero, uh, what do you see as, you know, perhaps its current weak points in terms of its decentralization, things that need improving? You obviously made a huge improvement with regards to with the P2 pool. Anything else overall in terms of the ecosystem where you think um, improvement can be made that would make it more unstoppable, more decentralized, more censorship resistant, more digital cash like? Well, we need, uh, I think, better point of sale applications for businesses so they can start using Monero. I haven't heard uh, about, well, I heard about one or two, but uh, I haven't heard about many businesses adopting it. So we need better uh, user experience for businesses in the first place. Okay. So you, so you can actually spend Monero instead of selling it first mm -hmm. and then spending. Yeah, I saw, I saw one talked about recently on Reddit um, by Ch Change Now or Now Payments uh, is launched one, it looked like. Recently, I know there, there's others. Uh, but so in terms of the protocol, you're, it seems like you're, you're pretty satisfied in terms of it currently working as digital cash. It's more so this now, this need to create user-friendly uh, tools for people to, to use it. Merchants. Yes. Yeah. Things like that. All right, definitely agree there. What is uh, so? You said you were you're from Russia. You're not currently there. Do you have any uh, idea of what the crypto scene is currently like in Russia, especially with regards to Monero? Any insights there? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, don't don't want to get you in trouble. On you know. <laughs> no, I, I actually I don't know what's crypto scene in Russia right now. I read some Russian forums, but they. Don't talk about Monero much. Maybe I read the wrong forums, <laughs> but I am mostly reading Reddit or English speaking forums. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was curious if there's, um, you know, a large Monero scene in Russia. No, I haven't heard about it. I think that they're all mostly also on English speaking side of the internet. Okay. Uh, once again, thank you for coming on, man. Greatly appreciate the work you've done. Um, thanks for showing your face on this show. I'm sure the community is going to be excited to, to hear from you. Is there anything else you want to bring up? No, nothing. All right. Very cool, man. Uh, maybe in the future you'll jump on again. I would, I would, I would love for that to happen. Is there, um, where, where can people, I guess, continue to follow you and, learn more about the projects you're working on? Yeah, maybe if there's an interesting topic to discuss or maybe I'll have some updates. Okay. Yeah. And for in terms of the community, where's the, where's the best place for them to, to follow you? Just on Reddit? And... Uh, well, I'm only on Reddit. Yeah, I'm active on Reddit and IRC mostly. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I don't don't have Twitter, so I never had it to Twitter. I think it's just a waste of time to respond to thousands of people. No, you're you're actually doing the work, you know, where you're not out there uh you know bullshitting on Twitter, you're actually yeah coding. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Um and yeah, we'll reach out to you again at some point when you once again release something. Surprise the community. <laughs> yeah, not in not in the foreseeable official. I'm concentrating on releasing the uh, pizza pool. Yeah, because it's not done yet. It's in beta testing. I still need to release a final version. And maybe someone will make some guides how to use it. Yes, I saw Seth posted one recently. Yeah, he already posted one, but it's complicated because because it's not in the release date yet. Right. We need to, sim we need to simplify things. Okay. What, when, uh, what's potential timeline there with one wheel? Well, first, we need to wallet support because peer to P2P pull payouts, they use uh, transaction format that 
uh, current wallets, they don't support fully. So we fixed it in the latest Monero release. I think one of mobile wallets already supports it, but as far as I know, Cake Wallet still hasn't updated. So when they update, it will be a good time to release. Yeah. Because if people start mining and don't see payouts, they will freak out. <laughs> if they what? And they don't if see they if you, people start mining pizza pool and they don't see payouts in their wallet, they will freak out, but it's only because the wallet doesn't support it yet. Got it, got it. And that's up to so the, the wallet. Yeah, they just need need to update to the latest Monero code to support it. They don't need to do much on their side. Okay, okay. All right, I'm I'm sure we'll see that. I think people are excited about it. Yeah, I think it will take a not more than one two weeks from now okay very exciting all right matt thank you so much greatly appreciate it and uh, that that's all i got i, I feel like uh yeah. I, I i grilled you enough on on the pt <laughs> thank you so much yeah. yeah thank you for reminding me all right we'll be in touch uh i guess perhaps you think we'll see you at, at any events in the future? I, I know there's yeah, Monero my, Con happening, it's supposed to happen in Europe. If it's in Europe, yeah, maybe. Okay. Will come. Yeah. Very cool, Matt. So hope to potentially meet you in person. Yeah, looking forward. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much and we look forward to being back next week.